Good morning, seventh grade. Um, it's been a few days since we read chapter two together. Um, I hope you caught there was a really big Easter egg there that Jonas from The Giver has now appeared. Um, he is leader in the village, as they said that um, years ago someone had come in from far away on a red sled. Um, hopefully we'll see if Gabriel is someone in the village. That would be a really nice surprise too. Um, you might have figured out that Matt is now about 14. Um, is a number of years have passed. He's not quite an adult. Uh, starting to shave maybe a little bit, but uh, Matt has grown up too. Um, we also know that the seer at this point is uh, Kira's father, uh, Christopher. So maybe Kira will be in the story. Maybe Kira will not be. Uh, maybe that'll be an Easter egg for down the road. So hope you guys had a great weekend. Uh, here is chapter three. It's a very short chapter. I hope you enjoy it. I'm reading it also for the first time. So forgive me for any mistakes I make in the reading. Chapter 3. If we had a gaming machine, Maddie commented in a studied offhand manner, our evenings would never be boring. You think our evenings are boring, Maddie? I thought you enjoyed our reading together. Seer laughed and corrected himself. Sorry, I meant your reading to me, Maddie, and my listening. It's my favorite time of the day. Maddie shrugged. No, I like to read to you, Seer, but I meant it's not exciting. Well, we should choose a different book then, perhaps. The last one, I have forgotten its name, Maddie, was a little slow going. Moby Dick, that was the one. It was okay, Maddie conceded, but it was too long. Well, ask at the library for something that would move along more quickly. Did I explain to you how a gaming machine works, Seer? It moves very quickly. The blind man chuckled. He had heard it all before many times. Run out to the garden and get a head of lettuce, Maddie, while I finish cleaning the fish. Then you can make a salad while the fish cooks. And also, Maddie continued in a loud voice as he headed for the garden just beyond the door. It would be a nice end to a meal. Something sweet, sort of a dessert. I did tell you, didn't I, how the gaming machine gives you a candy when you win. You see, if there's a nice ripe tomato while you're out there in the gar going out there getting the lettuce, a sweet one, Seer suggested in an amused voice. You might get a peppermint, Maddie went on, or a gumdrop, or maybe something they call a sour ball. Beside the back step, he reached into the vegetable garden, and he uprooted a small head of lettuce. As an afterthought, he pinched a cucumber loose from its vine nearby and pulled some leaves from a clump of basil. <clears throat> Back in the kitchen, he put the salad things in the sink and half-heartedly began to wash them. Sour balls come in different colors, and each color is a flavor, he announced. I suppose that wouldn't interest you. Maddie sighed. He looked around. Even though he knew the blind man wouldn't see his gesture, he pointed to the nearby wall, which was decorated by a colorful wall hanging, a gift from the blind man's talented daughter. Maddie stood often before it, looking carefully at the intricate embroidered tapestry depicting a large thick forest separating two small villages far from each other. It was the geography of his own life and that of the blind man, for they had both moved from that place to this other with great difficulty. The gaming machine could stand right there, he decided. It would be very convenient, extremely convenient, he added, aware that the blind man liked it when he exercised his vocabulary. Seer went to the sink, moved the washed lettuce to the side, and began to rinse the clean salmon steaks. And so he would give up, or maybe even trade away, reading and music in exchange for the extreme excitement of pulling a handle and watching sour balls spit forth from a mechanical device, he thought. Put that way, Matty thought the gaming machine didn't actually seem like such a good trade. Well, it's fun. Fun, the blind man repeated. Is the stove ready in the pan? Maddie looked at the stove. In a minute, he said. He stirred the burning wood a bit so that the fire flared. He placed the oiled pan on top. I'll do the fish, he said, if you fix the salad. I brought some basil in too, he added with a grin. Just because you're such a salad perfectionist, it's right there beside the lettuce. He watched while the blind man's deft hands found the basil and tore the leaves into the wooden bowl. Then Maddie took the fish and laid it in the pan, swirling the oil around. In a moment, the aroma of the sautéing salmon filled the room. Outside, it was twilight, 
Maddie adjusted the wick on an oil lamp and lighted it. You know, he remarked, when you win a candy, a bell rings and colored lights blink. Of course, that wouldn't matter to you, he added, but some of us would really appreciate. Maddie, 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 the blind man said, keep an eye on that fish. It cooks quickly. No bell rings when it's done. And don't forget, he added, that they traded for that gaming machine. It probably came at a high cost. Maddie frowned. Sometimes you get licorice, he said as a last attempt. Do you know what they traded? Has Ramon told you? No, nobody ever tells. Maybe he doesn't even know. Maybe his parents didn't tell him. It's probably good. Maddie took the pan from the stove and slid the browned fish onto two plates, one after the other. He placed them on the table and brought the salad bowl from the sink. It's ready, he said. The blind man went to the bread container and found two thick pieces of bread that smelled fresh baked. I got this at the marketplace this morning, he said, from Mentor's daughter. She'll make someone a good wife. Is she as pretty as her voice makes her sound? Maddie was not going to be diverted by reminders of the school teacher's pretty daughter. When's the next trade, Mart, he asked when they were both seated. You're too young. I heard that there was one coming soon. Pay no attention to what you hear. You are too young. I won't be always. I ought to watch. The blind man shook his head. It would be painful, he said. Eat your fish now, Maddie, while it's warm. Maddie poked at the salmon with his fork. He could tell there was to be no more discussion of trading. The blind man had never traded, not one single time, and he was proud of it. But Maddie thought that someday he himself would. Maybe not for a gaming machine. But there were other things Maddie wanted. He ought to be allowed to know how the trading worked. He decided he would find out, but first he had to have he had the other thing to worry about, and the troubling awareness he had not dared to tell the blind man of it. There were no secrets in village. It was one of the rules leader had proposed, and all of the people had voted in favor it. Everyone who had come to village from elsewhere, all of those who had not been born here, had come from places with secrets. Sometimes not very often, for inevitably it caused sadness. People described their places of origin, places with cruel governments, harsh punishments, desperate poverty, or false comforts. There were so many such places. Sometimes, hearing the stories, remembering his own childhood, Matty was astounded. At first, having found his way to village, he had thought his own brutal beginnings— a fatherless hovel for a home, a grim defeated mother who beat him, and his brother Bloody were unusual. But now he knew that there were communities everywhere, sprinkled across the vast landscape of the known world, in which people suffered. Not always from beatings and hunger, the way he had, but from ignorance, from not knowing, from being kept from knowledge. He believed in Leader, and in Leader's insistence that all of Village's citizens even the children read, learn, participate, and they care for one another. So Matty studied and did his best. But sometimes he slipped back into the habits of an earlier life, when he had been a sly, deceitful boy in order to survive. I can't help it, he had argued glumly to the blind man, in the beginning of their life together when he had been caught in some small transgression. It's what I learnt. Learned, the correction was gentle. Learned, Matty had repeated. Now you are relearning. You are learning honesty. I'm sorry to punish you, Maddie, but Village is a population of honest, decent people. I want you to be one of us. Maddie had hung his head. So you'll beat me? No, your punishment will be no lessons today. You will help me in the garden instead of going to school. It had seemed to Maddie then a laughable punishment. Who wanted to go to school anyway? Not him. Yet when he was deprived of it and could hear the other children reciting and singing in the schoolhouse, he felt woefully lost. Gradually, he had learned to change his behavior and to become one of Village's happy children, and soon a good student. Now half-grown and soon to finish school, he slipped on only occasionally into old bad habits and almost caught himself when he did. It bothered Maddie greatly now, having a secret. That's the end of chapter three. Kind of interesting that Matt mentions missing school, as that's what we're doing. Um, I miss school. I don't know if you guys miss school. I hope you do. 
I miss being with you guys. I miss uh, asking some of you to start reading your SSR book and stop uh, talking and giggling with your friend. Um, I miss passing period, talking to some of you guys in the hallway and being silly with some of you and irritating you. So um, as I think about some a really good salad and a nice piece of salmon cooked, um, I'm going to give you guys an assignment now, and uh, maybe tomorrow, Chapter 4 will be a little longer. So have a great day. Be safe and enjoy this weather. Bye-bye.